Well, obviously, I have to tongue in cheek say, uh, well, Alex, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> right um ah. it's become so such a complicated question for me to answer and that's why i reached out to you uh to do a podcast on it and explore the how are you question it's the topic of today and so <laughs> we're going to be talking about how are you maybe some social constructs maybe some cultural mm -hmm. trances uh but just a little introduction mm -hmm. because people are probably like who is alex yes <laughs> well, alex is just a wonderful human being i'll let her talk about her credentials but we work across the hall from each other at the hd building uh for our clinical practices in mental health counseling um, but Alex does a lot of wonderful stuff. And I think the thing that's most exciting about me and where I send a lot of people to you is you are very connected with, um, like the festival type community and very mm -hmm. open-minded about like psychedelics and the way that they can really improve, mm -hmm. uh, some, some mental health topics that are typically resistant mm -hmm. to treatment. So welcome mm -hmm. Alex to the show. Anything else you would like to add? So thank you. Um, so I'm Alexandria Turnbow, and I am a licensed mental health counselor in Florida. Um, been licensed since 2020, I believe. Um, and I started my practice back in 2019. I'm now a qualified supervisor in the state of Florida. Um, so working to transition to a group practice. Um, also took the clinical uh, hypnosis training with Jesse and Zach uh, several years ago, and so I incorporate that into my practice as well. Um, I really enjoy working with clients on life transitions, uh, dealing with everyday stress and anxiety. Um, I teach them skills to help them learn to regulate their nervous system, um, do a lot of like mind-body integration uh, if they're open to it, teaching them about energy work and uh, what's going on in not just their head or why all the energy's up here, how to bring <laughs> it down and ground. Do you and, ever have some people who are like, no, I energy work, what are you talking about? That's that's frou frou hoo hoo shit. <laughs> well, more so some people, it's like a foreign language. They're like, what do you mean? Like, what are, what are you even talking about? Yeah. Uh, so I, I start using certain like language, like, do you know what the chakras are? And they're like, what? <laughs> uh, and I have like a, not a banner. It's like made out of wood, but like a carving of the chakras like on my yes. wall. And so I like have some handouts and if they're open to it, some are curious and they ask questions and others are like, mm, I'm not interested. Okay, that's fine. So you got to kind of gauge, see where they are. Most it's people true. buy into breathing exercises, right? Yeah, yeah, that's like, a, <laughs> that's like an easy way to kind of get into it. <laughs> right, but not everyone wants to know or cares to know like how or why the breathing exercises are effective, right? Why is that True. recommended? What does True. grounding really mean? Uh, why do I feel better sometimes if I step outside or take a walk? And so I like to offer some of that explanation and understanding if they're open to learning more about that. I'm I'm giggling uh, because it cracks me up. Uh, my whole thing is like dream interpretation. Like that's mm -hmm. that's what I'm known for. That's what I do. That's what I study. Like I'm I'm the guy on that. And so I'll get some clients who will tell me about their dreams, and I'll be like, "Well, do you do you like want to want to go into it? Like we could really use this." And they'll be like, "Yeah, sure. What does it mean?" And I'll I'll go into this like long waxing poetic like illustration of exactly all the details of their dream. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, sure, maybe. <laughs> yeah. I was like, you don't want to dig into that. Like, no, nah, not really. I got this other thing to tell you about. I'm like, okay, all right. <laughs> yeah, they're just not yes. interested, and I'm like, that's okay. You don't have to be interested in what I'm interested in. Right, right. Or when you like, uh, just how you just did get so excited to like teach them about what they're experiencing. Yes. And then they're just like, meh, or um, one bit like, oh well, my wife disagrees. Like she said this. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Like, I just want to help you understand you and like what's going on. And maybe that would help you to use the tools more consistently if you understood. But yeah. some people don't necessarily want or need to understand. It's like, no, nah, no. Nah. So <laughs> that just cracks me up. I was talking about that last night on TikTok Live. Mm -hmm. of just like some clients, you know, 
they'll just like, yeah, I don't care about your dream interpretation, baloney. I'm like, hey, that's okay, that's okay, but it does crack me up. I'm like, that's like my thing. Right. But, all right. You chose me, so. <laughs> well, okay, but that's not what you want. Great. <laughs> right, right. And I don't know about you, but like often in like the consultation or first session, I tell them like what I often like either talk about in therapy or what the first few sessions are like. Oh, I teach a lot of mindfulness skills and grounding skills. We will practice things in session and I encourage you to practice them in between appointments. And they're like, yeah, yeah, that sounds great. Right. Then a month or two in, it's like, okay, well, you said that sounded great, but you're not actually as open or practicing the things. So we can only do so much. That's right. That's right. And that's okay. Again, it doesn't bother me. I just think it's it's a little funny. Like, <laughs> like Yeah. 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 I don't know. I'm trying to trying to think of a good metaphor. It's like, you know, going to a brain surgeon and asking them about your heart health. It's like, sure. I mean, it's a that's a bad metaphor because it's still all in the mental health field. But it's like, right. OK, I mean, sure. Sounds great. Right. Because well, counseling is so broad, but or is like a thing. But we have so many different whether it's worldviews or theories that align with us, like the way that we view our uh, brain development and our mind and like our theories and perceptions can be so different, right? So you can see five therapists and they have five different perceptions of why you're experiencing what you're experiencing. And I think that's really confusing for people. Like they come thinking there is an answer. Sometimes there is, but sometimes it could vary. It's true. It's true. And that can lead to a lot of, I just, my experience has been, mm -hmm. that can lead to a lot of frustration and like mistrust of the counseling process because mm -hmm. each therapist will kind of have a different, the core of it's the same, but each therapist will have like a different mm -hmm. sort of angle that they come at the situation with. So they're like, well, what do I actually have? Like, you know, tell me, tell me what my diagnosis is. And yes. I'm like, well, I mean, it's not that the diagnoses are wrong. It's just like, what's the focus of treatment? So you know, you come in, I tell this to people all the time, they're coming in with a motivation problem. Like I just, you know, I'm not motivated. I don't have the energy like I used to. It's like, well, that could be because you're depressed and sad. That could be because you're too anxious and your your time is spent all up inside your thoughts. And so you have no motivation left over to get your day done. That could be because of some kind of neurodivergent problem. Like your ADHD right. is causing motivation issues. Your autism spectrum is causing motivation yeah. issues. So it's or like- the environment that you're in, like the home you live in or yeah. like, they're stressors and factors like which isn't isn't even you like that's just your environment and so it's like well so which one is it and i'm like well it's probably a, a all of them <laughs> right right it's so complex like trying to get people to understand like the diagnosis doesn't matter as much as people believe it does yeah and i'm listening to some of your other podcasts i know that's something that like, we align more on and it's like the you know insurance companies or doctors are so like set on that and so people believe like that's what's most important it's like well really the symptoms you're experiencing are most important like you know working with that like you could experience you know complex trauma as a child and meet criteria like you said for general anxiety for depressive disorder maybe panic disorder does that mean you have all of those <laughs> yeah 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 so I, I I always like to tell people, I'm like, it, I know all of this sounds complex, but I think it honestly is very simple because at its core, it's just trying to apply a very black and white type of thinking to yeah. a very gray type of field. And so mm -hmm. like if you've got something wrong with your with your body like physically like maybe you have the flu right yeah. we can we can do a test right let's check your blood let's give you a scan let's you know take a urine analysis and it'd be like oh you have the flu that's your diagnosis mm -hmm. but when it comes to mental health it i understand why the insurance companies and why our culture thinks it's going to be the same way because that's right. the way we do it in other areas of the health field sure. but in the mental health field it's like well the diagnosis doesn't matter as much. It's much more about like, okay, what are you experiencing? Let's work on this together. And so yeah. um, diagnosis is still important, but I think it plays yeah. a different role in mental health than it does yeah. in the rest of the medical field. Yeah. And so it can sound complex when it's actually very simple, just because we're thinking about it in a way that doesn't really apply to this type of field. 
Yeah. So. That makes sense. Yeah. Well, but that's not what we're actually here to talk about. It. Sure. So. Well, when you were saying like black and white thinking, it reminded me of the question, how are you? And Look at you. Segway you know, queen the, over here. The, the, <laughs> the default response or automatic in our brain sometimes is like good or bad, right? Those like those binary opposite. So you're doing good. Oh, I'm bad. I'm not good. And I noticed so many times, especially clients I've been working with a while, I was like, oh, how are you doing today? They might say one thing, but then quickly like shift, right? So you can hear people's oh. like automatic or default response that they're used to telling, you know, people passing in the hall. But then they're like, oh, this is a space where I can like say how I'm actually feeling or doing. Yeah. So, so you'll be like, how are you? And they'll be like, oh, I'm good. And then they'll launch into all the awful things that have happened that week. Sure. It's like, oh, I'm good. Well, um, actually, like, I'm not doing great today. Or <laughs> I, I'm really, I'm really tired. It's a very common one. That's how it starts. I'm really tired. tired. It's so funny that tired is like, well, first of all, do you ever actually say, like, someone says, how are you? And you said good or bad. Do you ever actually say bad? <laughs> um, I say things like, uh, I've been better. Um, well, I've heard you say that one. Yeah, I've heard you I've say that one. Better. That's a go-to. Um, I've said I'm tired. I mean, I've said I'm not doing great. So I guess I often say what I'm not feeling. I don't mm. know that I've ever said I'm bad. I'm terrible. Like those don't come like default to me. Um, yeah. But I guess in the part of my brain says, well, if you're not good, you know, then you, then you are doing not well. Is that like, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm reading into it, but is that an avoidance thing? It's like, well, if mm. I say I'm awful, mm. that feels bad. But if I mm. say I'm not great, does that feel better? Yeah, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. I'm just, I'm just exploring sure. this with you here. Like saying What's the difference? That, say like, oh, I feel, I feel bad. Like I can almost like feel like the energy going like down. Right. Uh. Oh, I feel bad. I feel heavy. Um, like I do a lot of like sensation work with clients. Like what are the sensations you feel in your body? And so they might say things like, uh, oh, it feels heavy in my chest or I feel a lot of pressure. Um, and so those things I think more align with not doing as well as they could. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just sitting here thinking about it for me. I'm like, well, what do I usually say? And usually it one very much depends on context. Mm -hmm. Like the person that I'm talking to makes a huge difference. Mm -hmm. um, is this a casual acquaintance? I'm always just going to say good. Like I, one, uh, I know that this is a social construct and I'm supposed to say good. And nah. I don't care too much to buck the system right now because like I've got other things to do today. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to say good. Um, and then two, I also might not want to divulge like why I'm unwell. Mm. to you because i don't know you stranger uh so i'm just gonna say good uh, yeah but on yes. a like emotional level i think i think if i was to say bad and sometimes i do say they're like how are you i'm like oh terrible but i always laugh while i say it because if i didn't laugh while i say it i'd feel so guilty <laughs> so guilty because it's like oh who ruined the vibe of this conversation? It's right? this asshole, Jesse. Right? It's like it's it's tricky because you don't you don't always want to put what you're feeling onto them. Um, like I went to a uh, retreat, the Moonshadow retreat that we oh, went yeah. a couple weeks ago, and I was participating in a tantra workshop, and they were explaining uh, energy exchanges. Right. Same workshop. Yeah. And to be really mindful of the energy that you're giving. They were talking about in context of your partner. But right. like if you come home from work and you, you know, just start, oh, how was your day? And you start unloading all these terrible things that happened to you. Well, then they may absorb that energy, but that wasn't present within them before. Right. And so being really mindful, like, okay, like what are ways that you can, you know, be honest, but also not put that on them to deal with like ways you can like regulate your own. Um, so I thought that was Ooh. really helpful. Did they have some suggestions? When, when uh, I took the workshop, it was, I was very confused. I, I don't feel like we got to anything practical. Oh, <laughs> uh, so I feel like there was a lot. The, the practical though may sound like a lot of the other suggestions that come up, but the practical advice is doing deep like breath work and meditation. 
on yourself. Uh, like, so that way you can it. share it without unloading. Right. Like you have been, had a time to like oh. process, like observe, like balance your energy. Then you might be able to share, but you're not sharing and like projecting all of that negative energy with it. Well, that's a fascinating concept that I don't think I've ever thought about before. The difference mm -hmm. between sharing and unloading. Mm -hmm. Well, and that factors greatly into the question of how are you? Because yes. it's like, I mean, how are you is a loaded gun. It's like, am I going, is this person going to share with me now? Or are they just going to dump? And it's like, I don't yeah. know if I want to deal with their dump right now. Right, right. And especially like something I notice a lot in um, like public, right? Just out and about. Sometimes people say, how are you in um, in exchange of hello? Like they're not even, they're not even stopping. You're just like passing by. So instead of like, hey, like, oh, how are you? But then they just like keep walking. So I always oh, I find hate that. that one. I hate it too. I find that so odd. Like you're not actually asking how I am or even I didn't like even answer. to listen. <laughs> so that one's weird. Um, but as you were describing how you answered, I thought of other things I say instead of bad that are not good. I will Go often say, I'm fine or I'm okay. I'm okay is usually for me like low energy, may have be having a hard time like being here or focusing. You know, I'm managing. I say that sometimes I'm managing. I'm okay. Managing. Mm -hmm. Which is ironic because the managing then makes me think of my managing part. Um, parts work is another thing that has come up with the how are you question. Wait, what do you mean parts work in relationship to the how are you question? Break that one down for me. Yes, yes. So um, one of the models that I use for counseling is internal family systems. Right. So for the listeners who may not be uh, may not be aware of what that is, just essentially means that the majority of us have different parts of our personality. Right. This does not mean you have multiple personalities. Um, I was going to say means, schizophrenia. What? Right. So that's what most people are like. What? No, we all have multiple parts of ourselves. And so the one that's most easily identifable is our inner critic. Mm -hmm. Right. I'm, I'm so, giggling because you said parts and I thought of private parts. <laughs> <laughs> Those are parts, too. Just Those are parts. Kinds of parts. OK, Physical great. Parts. Thanks for redirecting me. <laughs> uh, so our inner critic is often that voice that says like mean things to us, or it might be really judgy towards ourselves or others. Yes. Um, it, it just, you know, it's up for some people. It's constant, like all going, going, going for other people. It might be louder in social situations. And for some, it might be louder when them by themselves. But most people, if they like sit, they can be, oh yeah, I, I can tell like what that voice is in my head. Right. Mm. So that's part. And yeah. then there are younger versions of us within us as well, right? There could be a part of us that is stuck at age six, right? There could be a part of us that is age 14, uh, 25. That differs per person, but there are typically multiple younger parts. So depending is on... There, is there something that makes those younger parts? Just for the listeners to understand, like, why would I have a six-year-old? Why would I have a 14-year-old? It sometimes is because like something we'll say like intense happens at mm. that age. It could be a trauma, which really can be anything that that six year old like couldn't process or comprehend. Okay. Right? They didn't have the skills or the resources or support to release that or to mm. get past it. And so it almost like they get like stuck there. Mm. Okay. So these are kind of like pivotal key moments that can yeah. kind of create like man, I'm thinking locked personality, but that may be a mm. little bit too <laughs> exaggerated of a term, sure. but um, like maybe some key markers like this. These are pivot points. Yeah. If you were looking at it on like a timeline, right, those would be kind of like key yes. points throughout your life that had a significant impact on your personality or identity development. Yeah. This would be a bullet point on the timeline. It's yeah. significant. So yeah. it's going to be a bullet point. All right. Okay. Right. Gotcha. How does that relate to the how are you question? Then? Yeah. So say that, um, say that something happened that morning. Say you're on your way to work and one of your parents calls you, right? Okay. And you have like a disagreement. Okay. So that might activate a 14-year-old part. 
right? So that 14 year old part is feeling whatever emotion they might feel. They might feeling really frustrated or irritated, right? Before that, you were having a great morning, mm -hmm. right? Things were going well, you were gonna get to work on time and there hadn't been any problems. And so if someone then asked, oh, how are you? It depends which part is like, I'll say driving, right? Or is in charge mm -hmm. at that moment and they might respond, right? So that part might say like, oh, I'm really irritated. I'm really frustrated. Yeah. But then if some time went by, say 20 minutes went by, you know, they're walking around, settling into their morning or whatever, and that had kind of faded away, mm -hmm. they might be back to like authentically feeling, oh, I'm doing really well. Hmm. So it's a, it's a moment by moment thing too, but you're kind of relating that to parts work. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, I notice it in myself when clients may ask me, like, how are you? I find it difficult to answer because like some parts of me are doing really well. I, um, you know, might've gotten a lot done on my lunch break, feeling really productive, right? But another part of me might be really uh, stressed or rushed because of all that I have to do when I get off of work right? Like depending on which part you're tuned into or which one is present, they can all be authentic, right? You can feel multiple feelings at once. True. And so if I'm answering authentically, I find it difficult to answer concisely. Oh yeah. It does take some time. Like if you're going to answer authentically. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, um, I'm just thinking about for me, cause clients ask me that all the time and I, I very much recognize that that's a part of the social construct like and a lot of times clients though it is a paid service there can be this feeling because of mm -hmm. social cultural norms that like um i don't want to dominate the conversation but it's like well therapy is a conversation that is dominated by the client that is the point but like because that's a very strange and unique type mm -hmm. of experience that's not normal out and about in the wild yeah They'll be like, well, how are you? And I'm like, that's really cute. Thank you for asking. And so um, I always answer honestly, mm -hmm. but I don't think I ever answer authentically. Mm -hmm. And I think the difference for me is I'm never going to lie to a client. That's that's absolutely crucial for trust. Yeah. But when I'm talking with a client, even if it's on the phone, even if it's over text, even if it's in my session, they are always occupying that client space inside of my brain. And so that role for me is really important to never break. And so it's yeah. it's the same reason I'll get clients who ask me out. They're like, hey, you know, is we is this the end of your day? I'll be like, yeah, yeah I'm packing up, going home with this. They're like, you want to get a beer? And I'm like, that is really kind. I, I really appreciate the offer. Um, but in my head, I'm thinking, no, absolutely not. <laughs> not because I don't like them or I don't appreciate sure. them as a human being. I mean, I, I really truly believe I love all of my clients, right? but I'm not your buddy. And it's yes. very important that I don't be your buddy yes. because I occupy a professional space inside of your life. So when it comes to the, how are you, Mr. And Mrs. Mm -hmm. Therapist, I'm always answering in a way that's honest, but is based on what the client needs for that session that day. And so mm -hmm. I may take some time and answer that question by taking a whole 10 minutes because I want to model for that client that this is a space where you can pause and explore mm -hmm. that how are you question because I know that's difficult for them. So I'm going to model that. In other places, I can recognize, oh, you struggle with shame and guilt and so you're asking me because you feel guilty that this session is going to be about you so i'll give them a very performative answer you know i'll tell them something about my my son people love to talk about kids so i'll be like oh yeah you know a little man's doing this today and it's like oh, it's been pretty good how are you and then i quickly turn it around yeah. so it's all based on what they need it's never a lie but it's not yeah. really authentic because i'm right. i'm performing a service here this is yeah. about you and it's supposed to be i i enjoy it being that way I don't know. How is that for you? How do you answer that question when a client asks? Well, I want to say that makes a lot of sense. And I can tell that you answer really intentionally. Super intentionally. Very intentionally. Yeah. It's like you're you're not just giving your default response, right? Yeah. Uh, like, okay, like what, how do I phrase this or formulate this that will be most beneficial or in a way that they um, they want or need to receive? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I would say that I, depending on the client as well, it absolutely varies, right? Because some clients 
you don't want to say too much because I've learned that they, it activates like a helper part of them. Right. And then they were like, oh, they would need to make you feel better. Right. Yeah. So there are some times where I have been honest and then they're like, oh, I'm so sorry. Da, 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 da. And then I like, it's back. It's like, I'm okay. Like I have support, like I'm processing and regulating. I just wanted to answer honestly. Like you don't, you can take that. You don't have to take um, responsibility for helping me. Right. That's right. not what this is. Um, but that is a, uh, something that I think people are so used to doing in their day-to-day -day life that it does take a time to recognize, oh, this dynamic is different. I don't have to um, show up in the same way here that I do in the outside world. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. And I love what you said about being intentional. Um, mm -hmm. And even in that, it's, I mean, I, the conversation you just kind of illuminated isn't like corrective, um, but it is like informative. It's like, oh, I can see that you now feel the need to take care of my how are you answer. Yeah. Um, I wonder where that comes from. I wonder why you feel that. I certainly <laughs> don't need, or even to be honest, don't want that from you. I just wanted to be honest. Yeah. And so like being intentional with that response and sort of using that response as a like, hey, I noticed that you now feel obligated. Like that's interesting, mm -hmm. use that for your therapy. Um, but it mm -hmm. all goes back to being intentional. And there's a couple things that I thought about, like one, because I specialize in trauma and disassociative <laughs> identity, um, a lot of the things that I do, all the things that I do are super intentional. And I was talking with my interns about why I enjoy working with dissociative identity so much, um, because it's such intense work and you have to be so intentional mm -hmm. with that because I'm not only thinking about how my responses are going to be received by the person in front of me, but I'm thinking about how that response is going to be received, interpreted and misinterpreted by the entirety mm -hmm. of the system. And sometimes like I've had clients, you know, systems who are like nine, six alters all the way up to thousands of alters. And so I'm, I'm being very intentional about thinking of that. Same thing goes for trauma. Mm -hmm. I may be talking yeah. with you here, but I'm also thinking about the entirety of that human being's story right. and how my response to how are you is going to be received by mm -hmm. the entirety of the story. Mm -hmm. um, and for me, uh, a lot of people like to uh, speculate about how my odd brain works <laughs> because I can't visualize things. And so I think for me, that's one of the things that I really appreciate about my brain is I'm not seeing the story. Mm -hmm. It's all connected through ideas. Like that's the way that my brain processes things. So when I'm seeing a yeah. person, I don't actually see the experiences that they've had because I can't visualize inside of my head with aphantasia, yeah. but I everything's connected through ideas. And so I get this whole package of the ideas and the inner relationships between all of their experiences. So when I'm answering, how are you as a therapist, it is highly processed. I guess that's the point of trying to get to. Yeah. Highly intentional, highly processed for therapeutic gain. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and hearing a lot of like higher level thought, like you're observing the therapeutic process, almost seeing like a mind map of clients and like their experiences and parts. yeah, pretty, pretty meta. It's like thoughts yeah. about thoughts kind of thing. Thoughts about thoughts. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. The how are you question. So when it comes to like your personal life, like outside of therapy, mm -hmm. Um, do you still answer the how are you question with that same level of intention and process? Or do you just like, you just throw it out there, you're like, I, I take zero responsibility for how you take this statement? I, I think it would often depend on who I'm talking to. Um, I talk on the phone to quite a few people, um, whether it's like my brother or sister, uh, close friends. And so the majority of the people that are asking me really want to know. Mm. right like they are genuinely like curious like how are you doing right now some of that might depend on how i answer might depend on like if i know how much time we have like i have one friend that often calls me oh i'm on my way to pilates so i know we're only going to be on the phone five or ten minutes right Got it. so i might not open up a thing that i like am experiencing that i want to process with her in that moment because I wouldn't have time to, you know, talk about or process all of what I'm experiencing. Yeah. Right. But if I'm talking to someone else and there's not like a time limit, 
I might vent about this one thing I'm feeling or experiencing, talk mm. about this positive thing that happened. Um, but I think it is sometimes all over the place. Like it's not like just the negative things I've experienced or like just the highlights. It's kind of a all of it. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm thinking about that too. Like I think a lot of the ways that I respond, um, and I don't even know if this is, I don't know if it's healthy, but I also don't know if you could change it culturally. But I am thinking, like you said, when somebody asks, how are you? I'm thinking, what's their intended purpose for this statement? Mm -hmm. If I know they're on the way to Pilates, that how are you is not a, let me listen to you for an hour. Yes. That how are you is a, just checking in as a friend. Right. If it's, um, if it's somebody I don't know super well, like I'm, uh, I'm starting an interview or I've got a business meeting. They're like, Hey, you know, welcome to the the meeting. Uh, how are you? I'm like, yeah, I ain't launching into anything right there. Yeah, <laughs> we, sure. got, we got business to attend to. So I'm often, which is kind of weird, but I'm often thinking about what is that person's intended purpose for that question of how are you? Yeah. If it's passing in the grocery store, it is zero intended purpose. <laughs> it's a formality that I'm not even going to stop pushing my cart to actually hear your response. <laughs> mm, yeah. Um, I don't think that's probably good, but I also don't see how it could change. Well, sure. Because like you said, it, it is such a social construct, right? We're like programmed to like be polite, you know, check in on people, ask how they are, right? If you see your neighbor in passing, but again, like if it's someone you, you barely know, you're probably less likely to answer that. However, there have been so many times when I am out, uh, like checking out at the grocery store, right? Yes. And I'll ask the clerk, like, oh, like, how are you doing today? Or like, how is your day? And sometimes they answer authentically, like, oh, it's been a really hard day. Like, I'm, I'm ready to go home. And I almost always say, like, oh, I really appreciate your honesty. Mm. Like, when people do, people that I don't know, when they answer me authentically, instead of just like, oh, I'm fine, or oh, I'm good. I tell them like I appreciate their honesty. Nice. Huh. Huh. When somebody says they're not good, how do you receive that? Like as a counselor, because mm -hmm. in the beginning of this episode, we talked a little bit about how if I am honest, I will often laugh as I say it. How are you? Terrible. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> because I feel the guilt of honesty, which mm -hmm. is pretty, pretty messed up. As a therapist, when somebody is honest, like oh, I'm having a really rough day, I'm like really can't wait to be done with work. What do you feel? Hmm. Let me think about that for a second. In the moment, yeah, yeah. Answer authentically. <laughs> what do I feel? I feel a little bit of sadness for mm. them. Um, I would say I have gotten really good at not absorbing people's feelings or energy for the mm. most part obviously not a perfect system but to be able to see like as many clients i see in a day like i can hold space for their feelings and i'm empathetic but i'm not absorbing their feelings so when that person answers me at the grocery store i'm not feeling the weight and heaviness of how difficult their day is and i don't have to to feel sad and compassion for how they're feeling yeah huh do you think that's a common experience like do you think most people have that boundary of not absorbing people's energy or do you think most people just absolutely suck it right in absolutely not um i think most people suck it in like just absorb it like a sponge uh, and i think the majority of the people don't even realize that how they're feeling some of it doesn't even belong to them they don't have the awareness yes that they are absorbing the energy of their partner or their children or their boss or their, you know, coworkers, their friends. Like, I don't think a lot of people know that, that it doesn't belong to them. Yeah. I'm, you may see my eyes glazing over and zoning mm -hmm. out. Cause I am the super guilty of that one. <laughs> I'll be in my office crying and uh like like i'll get into the office there was one morning i was just like bawling my eyes out and i'm like i had to stop myself i'm like jesse you got to pull it together you got to see people today <laughs> yeah and i was sitting there I'm like okay wait a minute are any of these feelings actually yours jesse and i had to stop and i'm like sitting on the floor like almost yeah. fetal position and i'm like 
I don't think so. I was like, I feel good about myself. I feel very positive about the way yeah. that fitness is going and like how my day is going. And I was like, whose feelings are these? And then I kind of like realize, identify like, oh, these feelings come from this person, but I just sucked them in. Yes. And I was like, and then the realization of like, hey, you don't have to feel any of that if it doesn't belong to you. And then I just let it go and like the tears stopped and I like pick myself up and I'm like, oh, I'm going to have a great day. And that just blew my mind. I don't think this happened a month ago. I don't yeah. think I've ever done that before in my life. I'm really mm -hmm. good with clients, but when it comes to my personal relationships, I just, I absorb, I just suck it all in. Right. And right. that was a really revolutionary experience of like, oh, I don't have to do that. Yeah. Now we could go into history about how I developed that habit, sure. why I developed that habit, what traumas in my life caused me to be mm -hmm. an absorber in that way, because there's plenty. Uh, but that was huge for me. And right. it sounds like you kind of understand or you identify that a lot of people do that. I do. I do. And so there are, I'd say, a group, large group of people that are unaware that it's even happening. Okay. Then there's a group of people who may be aware that it's happening, but are adamant that that's just the way it is. They don't have any control over it. Um, that's people that often consider themselves empaths, right? In, yeah. You did a podcast. There's a, there's a smirk really, as you say really that. Yeah. Enjoyed. Um, I don't remember like the, the one of the quotes that you made, but it was something along the lines of people who are empaths, like, well, are you or are you just absorbing other people's like feelings? Because this like trauma response. Uh huh. And they they don't believe that there's another way, right? And so like some I try to like teach some of the somatic work and like energy practices to like release it. Some quite literally like brushing it off of you right? Shaking it off. Like a dog gets up and like shakes it off. Like he's shaking off that excess energy, right? That sleepy energy that isn't serving him anymore to get up and walk around. Oh, I never thought about that. Yeah. Whoa, wait a minute. Is that what dogs are doing? I think so. Yeah. That's wild. Wait, I've never heard that before in my life, Alex. You know, I mean, Whoa. I conceptualized it myself, but you're, you know, your cats, mm -hmm. you have cats, they get up, they do their little yoga stretches, they move that energy back through their body yeah. and then walk up. Well, people think I'm a crazy person because I, I am very at least two showers a day. Not because I'm dirty, <laughs> but because I need the mental separation between mm -hmm. sleep. I, I wake up, I shower, mm -hmm. and then I go about my day. I get home, I shower, I go about my evening. And I need um, those blocks. And I never yeah. thought about it as like, oh, Jesse, perhaps you are doing energy work by using the water of the shower excited you know sometimes i just get in there to get wet and then get out <laughs> ah, <laughs> because i just need to rinse for you it's a transition but perhaps mm -hmm. it's related to energy work of i'm shaking off i'm rinsing off the excess energy the things that are not for me from the day oh now wait a minute now i gotta think about yeah, this once the podcast is over oh hmm interesting well, yeah, you, you know, I got me all up in my thoughts. Okay, okay. Yeah, I I think it is sad that some people don't know that the feelings that they feel may not be mm -hmm. for them. I tell a story all the time to my clients and my interns of one of the very first clients I had as a uh, student intern while I was still in my master's degree. Mm -hmm. You know, I was working at Salvation Army and um, I had this client, the client was doing great. All, all, they're doing all the things, you know, they were in mm -hmm. substance use recovery. They had like gotten a job. They were previously unhoused. And so they showed up every day for their therapy on mm -hmm. time. They showed up for work every day on time. They completed all the tasks of their AA 12 steps. Like everything was great, but I just didn't feel emotionally connected to them. I felt like the therapy was kind of shallow. I didn't feel like we were really like connected, like vibing back and forth, you know? Yeah, yeah. But I was a new therapist, so I just chalked it up to, I must be a shitty therapist. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was like, this is definitely a Jesse thing. And so then I come in one day and like, so-and-so is on my schedule. Um, and uh, I'm sitting down for therapy in the therapy office and they, and they didn't show up. I was like, well, this is weird. They always show up on time. You know, and so I go ask the clinical director. I'm like, hey, like, you know, I'm supposed to meet so and so. Like, where are they? And they're like, oh, you didn't hear? I'm like, didn't hear what? And they're like, they got kicked out. I was like, kicked out? They've, they've been perfect, perfect attendance, perfect yeah. record. I was like, what do you mean they got kicked out? They're like, oh, they they got in an argument with their bunkmate, 
and they brought in a knife and were intending to kill their bunkmate because of this argument. And I was like, what? What? Yeah. And it was at that moment that I realized this was a person who was probably diagnosable antisocial personality disorder. They did not mm -hmm. have the bad feelings of, I don't want to hurt another person. There's, you know, and there's no shame in that. It's just, that was their clinical yeah. presentation. They didn't have that empathy. Mm -hmm. uh, and so the lack of emotional connectedness with that client that mm -hmm. I wasn't feeling um, was related to their diagnosis, but I thought it was all my fault. Mm, yeah. And so it was a huge realization of sometimes when you're feeling a way in a relationship or in a conversation, you have to ask yourself, is this me or is this the other person's emotions, the other person's energies mm -hmm. that I'm feeling? And that was, that was huge. That experience has stuck with me. I mean, you can see for my entire career. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's really powerful. It's a really powerful process of increasing our self-awareness enough to be able to notice is what I'm experiencing belong to me or am I absorbing their energy, right? And then other people sometimes will then project their energy onto you. Like they are feeling a way because whatever you did or said activated something in them, right? Oh yeah. But then they're saying like, oh, like you're feeling this way. I'm absorbing your energy. But if you know, like, well, no, I'm not feeling that upset. Like, sure, I might be like a level three upset, but I'm not a level seven upset. Like, that yeah. belongs to you. Yeah. And a lot of people don't have the confidence in like what they're feeling enough to say that and to separate. I would say confrontational skills too. Like, you yeah, know, yes, sometimes skills to push back. Yeah. Cause sometimes to push back, um, confidence skills, assertiveness skills to be like, hey, this doesn't belong to me. That's yours. Here you go. Have it back. It takes a, some healthy, positive confrontation. Not like we're going to fight, but like oh. confrontation is in like, oh, I hear you're really upset. I'm sorry you're having such a rough day. You know, my day is not bad. I'm having a great day myself. That's kind of a gentle rebuff of like, I feel your energy. I recognize and validate your energy, but I do not accept your energy as my own. Yeah. I'm not going to absorb that today. I don't think our culture likes that. It's like, no, you're supposed to take it. No. Yeah. It's like, um, it feels rude. It's like that group think mentality. Like, <laughs> oh, if I'm upset, we should all be upset. Hell no. <laughs> right. Yeah. No, yeah. I'm not about that either. Okay. Well, as we wrap up this, yeah. I think, honestly, fascinating episode, um, mm -hmm. what are your, like, for somebody listening, what's your biggest recommendation for how people can improve or can mm. answer how are you mm. better from a mental health counselor sure so first i have a suggestion that doesn't directly answer your question i, I would it. say increase your awareness of like when you're asking how are you like don't ask if you don't actually want to know mm. right so like say something else instead Right. I, I say what's up all the time. I don't want to know how you are. Just say, right. hey, what's up? Yeah. So being more like, okay, are you, do I do this? Like, am I going throughout the day, like asking people this, but like not actually caring or taking the time to listen? Because sometimes yeah. it may not be malicious. Like we just do it automatically. Like I said, I see people use it as hello. Just say hello instead. Yeah. Hey. That's, that's more effective. Right. Um, so that'd be one. Um, what is a suggestion that I have? Taking time throughout the day to reflect on how you're doing before anyone even asks you, right? Ooh, Taking that nice. attunement with yourself. Um, I find doing it in the car is really easy to do, like having like check-ins um, or in between transitions, like getting ready to leave the house as you get to the office. Um, taking just a couple moments, like it doesn't have to be a whole 20 minute thing, you know, doing some breathing. Okay. Like, what do I notice in my body? Right. Do I notice that my shoulders are tight? Okay. Like what if I roll my shoulders, right? Mm. Some people really clench their hands or fists, right? Maybe stretch your fingers out. I'm uh, giggling. So like body I, energy work. I'm giggling. Cause I clench my butt cheeks. <laughs> Ah, there you go. Okay. I hold am a I lot of stress in my hips. <laughs> am I clenching my butt cheeks? Okay. Release. Uh, a hip uh, releaser that you probably may, or you might, I don't know. It's very oh, unusual. It's uh, actually called horse lips. So you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
That's funny. Horse lips. And that, like that helps to release the tension in your hips. There's a strong correlation in your jaw and your pelvis. Jaw and pelvis. Weird. I had no idea. Yeah. Yeah. That, that would take us in a whole other direction. That could be for another day. The, All right. A lot Episode of like wound two. work and um, <laughs> somatic stuff and. Okay, be on the lookout for episode two, Horse Lips with Alex. <laughs> That's great advice. One, asking yourself, how are you before somebody else does? <clears throat> so yeah. you can check in with yourself. Mm -hmm. And then two, oh gosh, what was the first one? My ADHD can't today. <clears throat> it was all what, about when you're asking. Right. Like be, your intentional, intention? with, be intentional with your asking. Like, yeah. It's something else or just say something else if you're not you don't actually care or may not have the maybe you care but you don't have the capacity yeah. to deal with anyone else's emotions today i and i am in full agreement with that uh, i think the piece of advice that i was going to give is if somebody else is asking you how are you before you've asked that of yourself and are mm -hmm. able to answer that that's a big problem you should be in tune with your own feelings and emotions mm -hmm. before somebody else forces you to be in tune. And then you're like caught on the spot because you'll be deer in the headlights and it'll activate your fight yeah. or flight panic response of like, how are I? How am I? Oh, God, I don't know. Yeah. Be in tune. Yeah. Be in tune. That's it helps in so many happened. ways. Especially if it's back to back or it's like a busy day and someone answers you. That's absolutely happened to me. Catch me off guard. Like, oh, well, let me think about that for a moment. Yeah. So again, I want to answer honestly, but they like notice that like, oh, you had to think about that. It's like, I mean, if you just don't, unless I just say good, then yeah, I have to sometimes have to take a moment to reflect. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, that would be my advice too. Is like, um, ask yourself, how are you? And make sure to maintain that connection with yourself. And then number two is recognize that how are you has a lot of social and cultural expectations. And when somebody says, how are you? And doesn't want to hear your answer, or you ask, how are you? And they don't answer you fully. Um, recognize that that's not yours. That's not yours. It's, don't internalize you know, that. It doesn't mean that you're not valuable. It doesn't mean that you're not important. It doesn't mean that your emotions are not worth listening to. I see so many people take that personally and think like, oh, I'm not cared for. I'm not loved. You're like, no, no, no. This is a social construct that's icky, sticky, gooey, and messy. Right. right. They're just not being intentional with their words. Yeah. So the, the, that would be my other piece that I would add to that. But I love that. I think we all could learn from, from that advice. So. Yeah. Okay. Alex, right. thanks for being on the uh, on the podcast. I uh, yeah. I honestly would love a second podcast about horse lips. That's yeah. very interesting to me because of my clenched butt cheeks. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, we'll do one on somatics. That can be a part of it. We'll go through some uh, okay. some, some various <laughs> skills that people can implement. That sounds great. Well, if anyone wants to look up Alex, where's the best way to get in touch with you or to find you? Yeah, so they can look me up on my website, uh, mindful-perceptions.com. Mindful Perceptions is the name I practice. I'm also on Instagram. It's mindful underscore perceptions because dash was taken. Um, really? And, okay. Yeah, so it's mindful underscore perceptions. Um, haven't been posting as much on there lately. Been taking more of a social media break, but I have been flow and come back to it. Um, but yeah, you can reach out via email or call if you're interested in a consult or learning more. I love it. I love it. Alex, thanks so much for uh, hitting me up with the idea. I'm glad we yeah. got it recorded. I cool. agree. Enjoy right. your day. Thank you. Same to you. <laughs> Catch you all next time. Bye.